Welcome to video two in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. In this video, we'll be talking about tool table setup or definition of your tools for both milling and turning. So to get to the tool table, we'll go tools, SolidCam, tool library, and we will create a new tool library. So you can see here I have the options of creating a milling library, a turning library, or a mill turn library. Essentially, all you're really doing here is telling you which type of tools you want to create. And since in this video I want to cover both, I'll just go mill turn. Not to say that if you are in a mill turn module file that you can't just grab from a milling library. It's just a matter of just kind of limiting it to whatever types of tools specifically you're trying to define. So as soon as you click on that, you get to this new tool library window, and it's just asking for a name. So let's just say we call this test. I can relate it to a machine by choosing from this list. And this list is the same list as your list of post-processors. Essentially, when you're telling it what related machine, you're really just telling it, if I use this post in a CAM part, it automatically will get this library to be my first selection. Uh, I'm basically just telling it that uh, when I go to add a tool or import tool, it's going to look at this library first rather than the other ones. And then where I'm saving this library you can change this location if you like, but this is the default library as seen in video one in, in user directories. This is the additional files location. So I'll just click OK, and it brings up the tool table. This is the same tool table that you'll see in CAM parts when you open up uh, your to define a tool or inside of a, uh, an operation when you say add tool or when you go to import tools as well. This is the same interface for any time where you have to select a tool or define a tool. In this case, we're just defining a tool because we haven't, we don't have anything to start with. So I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to say add milling tool or add turning tool. In this case, let's just start with a milling tool. So for milling tools, you can see we have all different shapes here to define. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to do a flat end mill, but you can see that you have all the different shapes here. And with each one, all you're really doing is just giving a different dimension based off of the dimensional drawing. So if I start with the flat end mill. You can see that it's listed there as tool one. I can change this to any tool number I like. I can set this to any storage section I want. Now in this case, because we haven't assigned it to a machine or we're not inside of an operation, not even inside of a cam part, it doesn't know what the turret would mean. Uh, I could have multiple stations on my turret or this could be on a mill and I could just have multiple uh, stations on, on the carousel. Um, so right now it just has tool storage. This is just to define the tool in terms of dimensions. Once you actually use it in an operation, you'll have the ability to tell it which station you'd like to put it in and what turret you'd like to put it in. Again, depending on the machine you're putting this on. Description is just script. It's just something that'll pop up in your tool sheets or pop up in your G code if your post is actually using that. And it could be as simple as something like the diameter symbol. It could be some words there. Let's say we define this as a half inch. So I'll just say half inch. We'll call this flat end mill. Down here are your dimensions. So I said I would make this a half inch. So let's make the cutting diameter, in this case, diameter D, as you can see from the dimension there, we'll make this half inch. By default, it wants to make these all the same, but of course I could have a larger arbor diameter. I can make this something a little larger. My shoulder diameter, as again, from you can see from the dimensional drawing, could just be that guy right there. So let's say we had a reduced neck. Uh, I could shape this any way I want. You're looking at this dimensional drawing and it could just be a simple half inch diameter all the way through. But of course, there are weirdly shaped parts out there, weirdly shaped tools out there. This could be something that has a reduced neck. I could even use this dimension, this uh, dimensional drawing to define something like a, a undercut tool, maybe a keyway cutter or something like that. Uh, there are dimension, there are definitions versions for that. If I clicked on add milling tool, you can see that there's other shapes down here for those sort of things. Here's a slot mill. But sometimes the flat end mill is the best one to use for oddball tools, especially shape tools. If you see this tips and tricks video on our YouTube channel for shape tools, I use this definition as well, simply because when you're doing a tool definition, really you want to define a, uh, a diameter and a cutting length and number of flutes possibly. So this is the easiest, the most basic definition that you can use for other shapes. The other shapes in this list are basically when you are using this tool specifically for its shape. And again, you can see that when we when we get into uh, other toolpath videos or other tips and tricks videos where these tools are used, 
the shape of the tool dictates the travel of the tool. So that's why the dimensions here are somewhat important, especially for things like cutter comp and wear comp and radius comp and that sort of thing. So further down the list, you can see that we have number of flutes, cutting length, shoulder length, just things to define the, the end mill. And if we take a look at our tool picture, clicking on this icon here, that's what we've defined there. That yellow portion is our cutting length. That blue dot represents the point at which the holder is holding it. So if this thing is overall three inches, I'm holding it by that half inch, indicated by this blue dot, which is two and a half inches from the tip of the tool. So there is the reference point for all our dimensions going up from there. Now let's define a turning tool. Turning tools actually come in two types, composite tools and solid tools. The main difference is composite tools define the insert and the shank as standards. Uh, let's just do the external turning as an example. Okay, so you can see there, first thing we're doing is defining the insert. When you define the insert, you actually pull down from these menus the different items that build that name. So this is right from your catalog. If you are ordering tools or you're looking at, uh, at what was ordered for you, the name of the insert will help you to, to create this. So let's say we make a really standard insert. We'll make a CNMG 432. So the C is already selected in insert shape. I'll just go down here and make clearance angle N, and I'll just go through, and as I'm doing this, you'll see that the name in the top right corner is reflecting what I've chosen here. So CNMG 4, three, and two. So I built it from the list here, shows me there. That's what I would have been looking for in my catalog. That's what I'm uh, putting in my, my shank here. Uh, cutting edge formation, different options there again, and cutting direction, right, left, or neutral, depending on what you're doing with this insert, depending on the rotation of your machine, depending on how you want this thing mounted on your machine. Shank, again, very standard stuff. Uh, some Clamping uh, options here, and again, from the graphic, you can decide which one, or from your from your catalog. The insert shape was taken from the insert definition. Lead angle, again, some standard lead angles there. Cutting direction taken from my uh, insert definition. And then shank height, shank width. Tool length, again, some standard stuff there. And then dimensions that you have control over, as you can see in the graphic here. So it's very pull-down based, very parametric based, where it's basically you're just going in there and you're saying from the pull-down menus how you'd like to build the tool. And if you look at the tool picture, again, very standard. It has the insert, it has the shank, and you can see the cutting direction as indicated on what side the, the insert's sitting on. Uh, what makes this even easier is if you don't know what shank you want to use, what angle you want to use uh, with the shank, or the shank definition here is not matching what you have in real life. Maybe you have a standard shank and you shaved it off, you kind of ground it a little bit so that you get better clearance, and all you want to worry about is just the insert with this definition. There's a button here that says insert only, and then you can insert your own lead angle. And what that looks like in the tool picture is just the insert itself. This can be used when you do shape tools. When you add a STL holder to represent the holder for turning, and you just need to place the insert in there. Again, there is a video on that on our YouTube channel. If we were to define a tool using solid tools, again, let's just do the equivalent, the external roughing tool. This one is more dimensional based. You can see here that from the picture, it's somewhat the same. It has a cutting direction. It has the insert placed inside the shank. But what we're doing here is we're defining that overall shape. This is for uniquely shaped tools. This is for um, maybe standard tools that you've reground. Maybe these are special tools that you've ordered. Something here that you don't really just have a name where you can just build from a list. So you define each one of these dimensions to get your customized tool. In the top right corner, there's a button that says mounting. We don't have access to it that yet because we haven't told it what machine this is going to be on. So there's a possibility that this machine only can be mounted a certain way, or if this is maybe a more sophisticated mill turn, maybe you have the upper turret, lower turret, maybe you have different ways like this to be mounted. So when you get into the part file, you'll actually click on mounting and tell it how it's mounted on the machine. Here, we're just defining it just by its dimensions. In addition to this window, in terms of dimensions, you also have the tool data button, tool data tab, where you can plug in your fees and speeds, depending on if it's mill or turning, you plug in your fees and speeds. 
iData is where you plug in your information for iMachining. So in this case, right now, we don't have a material selected. This could be for any material for any part file. So typically, I leave this blank. You can define the material the tool is made out of. So for iMachining, it'll take that into account. You can tell it what angle the helix is at for your tool. And this, even though this has some standard uh, values here, you can actually type things in there. So you can actually give it an angle again, to better refine your eye machining for, for use in the tool path. If you wanted to add a holder, Solicam comes with some default holder shapes, as you can see here. All you would need to do is from the global list, let's say we're going for our half inch, I'll go down to half inch, and I'll say, let's just use this standard one here. So as soon as I check that box, it gets into the global tab, and that's being added to my definition. You can see there from the tool picture, it's been defined. And just to better highlight what I was talking about, about the holder, that blue dot is where the holder ends and the, and the tool is being held. So if I want to hold it by one inch, I'll just change this to two inches, meaning that two inches from that end is where this thing should be sitting. And there you go, it's a little further in. Shape. Again, there is a separate tips and tricks videos on our YouTube channel for shape tools. So I would say check that out for what we would do with this section here. Coolant options. You check the box to tell SolidCam to use that particular type of coolant for this particular tool when it's in use. This second column here with these red lines will have either a red X, a red line, or a green check mark indicating that that is an option for this machine. Again, right now we're just defining the tool for general use, but when you actually use this in a CAM part, your post processor, your VMID, will tell SolidCam what to put in that column to let you know if it can be used or can't. It's the checkbox that actually activates that option. But in that column, the green check mark or the red X indicates that that option is available. Now, everything you define here is for the first use of the tool. It's for when you first import it into the operation. But as we'll see later in the other videos, once you bring it into the operation, everything else can be changed. You can change the fees and speeds, you can change the coolant options. The only thing that doesn't get changed is the actual shape of the tool, the actual definition of dimensions of the tool. Because once you pull that in there, you're not in this window anymore, you can't change this. But in the operations, you have control over everything else. Coolant, feed and speed. If you would like to um, cherry pick from other libraries and make your own list. That's what these options down here are for. So right now, what we would do here is we would save this to our global libraries and this tool library is useful for all part files. But let's say I have a couple of part files or a couple of uh, tool libraries that have already been created and I wanna create, uh, uh, I wanna make a master list. I can go to import tools and then from the libraries that come with SolidCam or some libraries that are um, that you create yourself, you can see here that I have a whole list of different ones that I've created or I've uh, gotten from customers. Some of them that come with uh, SolidCam. Some that come with SolidCam are the master tool list for aluminum, master tool list for mild steel. These are libraries that are created for you by us on the US-based tech team. And what you'll see is there are thousands of tools on here. Now, they are the same sort of thing that we were just looking at. These are tools that have dimensional definitions. So as you can see here, tool one happens to be already defined, everything in there. And all you're doing with this list is just pulling from this list so you don't actually have to create them. Or once you've created your own list, this is how you actually import it into the tool library for your part file and then use that tool. But a tool library like this has thousands of tools, as indicated by this slider here. So how can we filter through this to find the specific tool we're looking for? Let's say we want to find that half-inch flat end mill. These triangles here are your filters. So for tool type, I'll just click on that, and I'll clear all, and I'll say I'm only looking for flat end mill. So it filters the list to just show me the flat end mills. Okay, now I want it to only show me uh, half inch end mills. So again, I'll click on the triangle near diameter and I'll say, show me everything from half inch down to, let's just say 0.499. Let's really shrink it down to just anything that's about half inch. So there you go. From this list, 
those two criteria are satisfied. It's a flat end mill, half inch. And now I can just filter through this list even more if I want to use some filters, or in this case, I'll just look through the list and say, okay, the longest cutting length is this guy right here. So maybe I'll just use that guy. So once I've chosen what I want, bottom left corner, the white arrow imports just the selected tool. And it imports it either with the tool numbering that is defined in this library, or when I bring it to my active tool library, this one right here, it can just take the next available number. In this case, if I did this, it imports that tool with all its definitions as tool four. Or I can just import it right to my tool storage. Again, when you're doing this on the part level side, you have tool storage or you have the specific turret you'd like to put, you would like to put it in. The blue arrow imports everything from this list, everything from the entire library. How that could be useful is if you build your own library of tools for a specific machine. Let's say you have a machine that has a, a tool changer that holds 20 tools, and it's always the same 20 tools. You can define a library for that specific machine. Remember, you can relate it to that machine using this right here. And you can say, for the specific machine, it's always the same 20 tools. I'll just go to import tools. And when you get to this window, just click the blue arrow and it would import all 20 tools. That way you don't have to individually choose them or highlight them or anything like that. You can just say, just give me everything using that blue arrow. And then from here, you can modify them if you need to. So I imported this from that global library, but in this case, maybe I want to change it a little bit. So this is a way to kind of do a shortcut of a tool definition. Maybe I, I just wanted to get a tool that was half inch, but then I can manipulate these things here where it sits in its holder and whatnot. I have all these different options here to play with. Once you actually create your own library and you want to make it into a global library, well, by doing it outside the part file, this automatically becomes a global library. If, when I click save on this, it'll actually save it to the global libraries. And then in my part files, when I import tools, it'll be one of these libraries here. If you are already inside of a part file and you're creating tools on the fly, those tools only exist inside that part file. They are saved locally, not globally. But what you could do is you could take your local library and you can do a export. And then what that does is the same sort of thing you would do in the global setting. You would just say, let me define all these tools and then save it to a particular location. The default location, as indicated in video one, that same directory there. Let me just exit out of here. And then when you're inside of a part file, you'll just grab from that library or you'll build your tools in the same manner, just locally. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCamp, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your questions or your parts via the ticket system at solidcampsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this video series. Thanks for watching.